All right. So the fourth principle, be a team player, guys. I think we all realize that if we want to go fast, go alone, as an old African proverb says. But if you want to go far, you need to go together. And one of the benefits that I got to see, especially this weekend, was that when you work together in unity, there is so much that you can accomplish far beyond. If I have, if I got stuck doing that by myself, we wouldn't even be anywhere near where we were, uh, because simply I didn't know what to do. There's no way I was going to lift all those logs and carry them and dig a hole by myself. And so what you start finding as you get involved is that when you're a team player, things get done. And then the more effective and efficient I become, the quicker they can move is what I noticed. And it was amazing what we got done by sundown. We were so far out. It was unbelievable. And when I asked them, hey, what did you guys think about today? Because I've never built one of these things. Their response was, we went so quick. Thank you for all of your help. And so it was amazing to see how it was much faster than they anticipated. And the first half of the day was a while because not only was it hot, but we were learning. I was learning. But the more efficient that I got, the more I could contribute, which means that if I'm contributing more, imagine what they're able to do. Mm -hmm. And so it was amazing to just see how everything moved forward. So be a team player, guys. Mm -hmm. So here's how you need to be a team player. Number one, know your role. Just like that in that example, I knew Rick is not taking lead. I am not the engineer of this project. If I am, then you better run, right? And so know your role in the team atmosphere. Lead by example. Do what you say you're going to do and let others follow those actions that you take. Encourage others to push forward. <clears throat> We had a joke going on the whole time, just encouraging one another to keep push pushing forward because the reality is two of the helpers are in their 60s and they all have back problems. And so you can just imagine how a few of them need a little encouragement when you got 145 pound, you know, pole you're trying to put down there. And so it was all about encouraging each other so that we can get the job done quicker and be more effective. And so in your atmosphere, you need to ask yourself, do I know my role? Am I leading by example? Am I encouraging other people? And then the other piece that I, it goes really hand in hand with what I said is stop any toxic behavior. Understand that in order for a team to work and operate in unity, we have to remove all the toxic bad attitudes because that toxic bad attitude, what it does is it separates unity. It doesn't unite. And if we're going to achieve anything and go to the next level, we have to be the people that stop the negativity. So what I want to challenge you is next time we're working as a team and somebody starts talking negative, be the first one to say, hey, listen, we're a team. So when you say this about somebody else, you're saying it about me. You're saying it about you because together we are what makes this company. So let's work together. Let's put aside the negativity and let's start pushing forward and be that encourager that moves the ball forward. Everybody with me? Because all that toxic stuff is it brings people down. It doesn't lift anyone up. So what's the point of doing it anyway? So make sure that you're the encourager and that you stop the toxic behavior so that you can encourage anyone. And so I'll leave you with this power question on this. <clears throat> and this will be very powerful because this will challenge you to step up. Are my consistent actions an asset or a liability to the team? Understand that if you are the weakest link, people will be frustrated with you. If you don't take what you do seriously and you don't grow and learn in it, then what's going to happen is you become the one that holds everybody back. So just like I was the guy who was the weakest link very clearly in Saturday's project, my goal was to become better and better and more proficient at what I did so that I didn't hold them back so that I helped them actually go forward. So even though in the beginning they may have seen me as a liability, by the end of the day, they saw me as an asset. They gave me a high five. They were like, man, we're so thankful that you're here. Why? Because I came with a different attitude. I came there like I knew my role. I led by example. I continue to push everybody forward. And then at the end of the day, I started taking on their responsibilities to help them move forward faster. And before you knew it, I went from a liability bucket of, hey, this guy doesn't know what to do. He doesn't know how to use any of the tools. When we speak, he doesn't know what we're saying, what a pain in the neck this guy is, to, hey, man, Rick, could you do this? Could you do that? And I was able to help. So put, put yourself in that position. Are you being an asset or a liability to your team? And understand that if you're constantly saying I'm a liability, you're going to get cut out. Your team is ultimately going to separate you because you're holding them back. So while we want to be encouraging, right, you also want to be a contributor to the team, not just somebody who takes away from the team at all times.